Here's Wilson, and on the right side, the score! Rebound loose, wild scramble in front, score! Hello, welcome once again to the Power Play Point podcast. This is the Blue Liner on Point. Uh, and yeah, it's been quite a summer. And uh, we're back. Told you we would be. And uh, well, I uh, I have to admit, I've, I've been a little, a, 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 a little, a little neglectful of my broadcast partner. So I, I've worked up a little conjuring uh, to uh, hopefully kind of bring her back and and uh, smooth things over. Um, <clears throat> so uh, here goes. Mermaid, mermaid, by the sea, won't you come talk Caps hockey with me? Oh, gladly. Oh, Hello, there, Gil. There you are. I'm back. Okay. Yes. Sorry I had to do that, but I wanted to do a little something special for our reunion since we really haven't gotten with each other too much over no. the summer. We haven't gotten with each other at in all. a while. <laughs> at all. <laughs> or, right. In, yeah. In, in a yeah, while. Let's go back. Yeah, let's just keep it straight. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a while, but that's okay. We still kept in touch, but not, not as often. True. It's uh, not good. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, been quite a summer, of course. Uh, the first one celebrating the Cup uh, coming to D.C. Uh, of course, there was the parade and other things, but uh, when we last left you, we were going to take uh, some time off until about training camp, and uh, training camp is here, and boy, is it here. Uh, we'll talk yeah. more about that later. Uh, but first, I thought we would kind of go over uh, what uh, these past few weeks have been like for us and and what we've gotten done and accomplished okay so uh, you want me to go first sure absolutely okay so my first majority 90 percent of the summer i was on the pool deck uh either uh at a swim meet helping in a swim meet or swimming myself and then i spent uh, a week with the family in south carolina Outside of Myrtle Beach, which is awesome. We hadn't been there before. And now, of course, I don't know how it looks after the devastating uh, hurricane that just blew through there. Well, My God, before but... you get into that, let me let me just stop you there. Guys, if you're if you're having images in your head right now of my co-host, stop it. Stop the <laughs> stop the drooling right now. Pretty sure there's maybe get a hold one. of yourselves or better yet, get a hold of yourselves after we're done here. <laughs> if it helps but yeah ew yeah anyways um i wish i had that influence on people but not so much anyway so that was it it was it was relaxing and i you know this is the first time i've had to go back to school like mid-august so it was a uh, kind of a short summer but overall it was good and then i do recall we left you kind of a little boohooing moment of having a boring summer until two weekends ago. That is true. Yeah, I I'm not uh, I'm not a big uh, world class traveler or anything. So uh, me, yeah, it was more uh, doing the jobs, uh, getting work done, uh, bitching at my employers, blah blah blah, and just you know, whenever I had free time, uh, you know, feeding my head and drinking beers and that kind of a thing. Uh, until about two weeks ago, as you said. Now, uh, for those, I, I don't know if I've ever announced this. I might have, a, have. Long, a long time ago, but uh, I'll, I'll say it again. Uh, I am an ordained minister with AmericanMarriageMinistries.com, uh, and I'm licensed to perform uh, marriages anywhere. Um, and so... Uh, about 10 months ago, two of my dear friends that I used to work with uh, asked me to perform their wedding 
which was uh, about uh, two weeks ago uh, in uh, at their house. And I just want to say that I would not have traded that experience for anything. I had a complete and total blast. It was without a doubt within recent memory uh, one of the most worthwhile things I've done uh, in a long time and yeah it's it's uh, it, it, it was a great experience I wouldn't I wouldn't have traded it for the world did you sing uh, no no nor was I asked to I would have uh, if I was asked to but no I was not asked to do that impressions nothing like that um, but I did kind of spice things up a bit uh, my two friends did you go, wait did you go commando no I did not God, kill that it wasn't that kind of a wedding damn all right uh, <clears throat> but uh, I did kind of spice things up because my two friends are uh, big sci-fi fans especially uh, Doctor Who uh, and uh, so what I did was I came to the wedding dressed as well I didn't come to the wedding dress but I, I did the official officiating dressed as the 11th Doctor Who uh, complete with tweed jacket red suspenders and the bow tie so uh, I have no idea what you're talking about so yeah if you don't follow the series then yeah you wouldn't but uh, yeah but that's what they wanted so hats off to them well I, I, actually I volunteered uh, and, oh, and when I mentioned God. that they were like yeah go for it um, <laughs> and and so yeah, I I I, sh- I uh. I'm why would you ever? Ha- why do you have red suspenders and a red bow tie? Well, because that's that's the outfit. That's no, what... but I mean, like, why did why did you own that before? I didn't. Oh, okay. So this wasn't like, oh, I happen to have these things in my closet. No, no, nothing, okay. nothing like that. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that that's how I uh, that's how I was dressed, and uh, a okay. lot of uh, of course the the bride and the groom and. Uh, all of the guests that came uh, got a big kick out of that, um, and, and uh, it largely went off without a hitch. Uh, a little, little bit of a delay. Um, thank goodness the weather. Uh, I, I, you were talking about the hurricane that came through after you were in South Carolina. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the, by the time of of this thing, uh, the the hurricane was threatening, but never really got to us. Thank God. Uh, so, uh, the weather was a little bit humid, but otherwise just fine. And, and it was, it, it was just a grand time. And I, hopefully we made a new fan of the, of the podcast. I love it, new fans. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, the, the best person, uh, so uh, of the groom, uh, young lady, uh, I, uh, I was working with their ceremony and uh, I, as we were cleaning up afterward, I saw this badass weagle tattoo on her arm. And I noticed it. I, I, I looked at her and I told her, uh, oh, yeah, you're a fan, aren't you? She, she, she said, yeah, yeah, go Caps. And I said, well. Uh, I hope she was more enthusiastic than that. Oh, well, it was it was late. We were we were okay. uh, we were winded. And we were, oh, OK. We were tired as hell we'd given this thing our all okay uh but uh <clears throat> yeah no she was she was really into it and i said uh, well I, I and uh, a friend of mine do a caps podcast and uh i had her pull it up on her on her phone she she saw it she's linked it up and so hopefully she's listening now uh as we're uh, go, go. recording this and posting this so uh yeah so like pimping out the show at a wedding i'm impressed well hey you see a fan you know got, right? got to represent that's good so that's uh, good. good for you rebecca if you're listening uh glad to have you on board i hope you enjoy everything and uh hope uh we made another lifelong listener out of you i hope so so uh yeah it was it, it was great um uh, <clears throat> I, I got to see some old friends that i hadn't seen in a while uh, i got to meet uh, some of the family the bride and groom and everybody everybody just had a, a blast uh the the cake was terrific um yeah it just i love weddings it was it was it was it was, it was just a fantastic one-of-a-kind experience and I mean, I, I hope, I said on my personal Facebook page that I hope I'd found my calling. 
uh, you know, it, it just felt like it felt like a, something I was meant to do. And I mean, I don't I don't want to spoil it, but maybe uh, it, it could turn into like a side job or something like that. I, I don't know. It, it's possibility for the future, but it just it just felt like something I was meant to do. So I. Awesome. I couldn't. I couldn't get over it. So that was that was the finale to my summer vacation. Okay. Well, it ended on a good note. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say so. And awesome. now, now it's a <clears throat> it's a we're a, a few days into fall, and as you might be able to hear in my voice, I have my usual fall cold. Uh, my body just so loves to be uh, some sort of an alarm clock for when the damn seasons change so if if you hear that hear a certain twinge in my voice uh that would be why so yes and if i sound tired it is because i had the stomach flu or excuse me food poisoning oh, yesterday lovely yeah that was uh, quite the <clears throat> image let's just say it's cruel it's torture it's not okay ever ever to have to go through that but speaking of marriages so i will say if we ever have to like if i was ever asked and i I mean i have been asked things about like marriage and how do you know and your soulmate and blah blah and it's like yeah there's there's lots of things that that you're gonna know like sense of humor you're attracted you got great chemistry everywhere Um, all that kind of stuff, but it really boils down to you and your significant other, either you or that person gets a stomach flu or food poisoning. And you can look at that person as they're going through it and be like, I got your back. I'm going to, I'm here. What do you need? Like clean, (laughs) clean clothes. Uh, I like for me, I'm like, I need a wet washcloth because like from your childhood, like for some reason, that's like the cure all. I'm like, it has to be cold. Um, and it makes you just feel better, even though you've got things pouring out of you and it's not okay and it's so painful. But I will tell you, that to me is what makes relationships last when you can be with that person, like, you know, be with that person, see them at their worst and still be like, yep, they're mine. <laughs> I love them. I, so, well, uh, yeah. For, no, well, for me, uh, okay, we're talking soulmates. I, I would be like, yeah, a true soulmate would be like, I don't just have your back. I got uh, uh, mopping a bucket behind you, cleaning <laughs> up what came out of you, and I, I'm still sleeping in the same bed with you. <laughs> right. There's exactly. your soulmate. Yeah, exactly. And then, but then like, and yeah, and then there becomes a point where after a couple of days, I'm like, seriously, I'm kind of done. <laughs> I need you to to get better. Um, totally kidding. But yeah, I think that that to me is uh, it's a true test of a relationship. Is like who who can look at you when when all of that is going on and you're having like the true exorcist moment, and Ooh. they're like, hey. What can I get you? <laughs> there, there, there's there's a reference. Right? Yeah. But there are two. Like, there's just sides where you're just like, bah, I'm going to die. Um, but I pulled through, and I had to go back to school today, and it was fun. Glad to <laughs> glad to hear you, uh, yeah, you, yeah. Said, you, you were under the weather for a little while there. Yeah. Well, last week I had probably what you have right now. I, I get that. I usually get bronchitis or strep within the first month of teaching like clockwork and uh luckily i knock on wood skated past that and just had just a terrible head cold that would have been really annoying to listen to on air because like some people can can have a head cold and sound um have that like deep raspy sexy voice and some people you're like god go blow your nose that's (laughs) probably what i sounded like i'm like i'm not gonna put anybody through that i don't even want to listen to myself so now I'm just, you know, I've I've got parts of my body that hurt from the experience of of this food poisoning, but um, I'm all good. I'm good. I'm so glad to be back. I feel like we should have, like, we need to like have it, and and I should have gotten you an anniversary card or something. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. Let me do some quick checking here, but I I don't know that we've actually hit the one year mark yet. I think we did. Our first show was like um, in October, 
if I think about it. Yeah, I'll, Probably. I'll, I'll come back to it. But like you uh, don't have it, you don't have it on your calendar. Well, I, not, no. not quite. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking for the. I'm looking for the. Uh, 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 the, the dates on the podcast app and the, of course they don't go far enough back because they only show so much true but, but I think now I think you're right I think it was in August I think it was or excuse me in October but and then I'm thinking we're getting well, there there's not going to be and I don't know I'll have to maybe think of my own anniversary card because there's certainly not going to be anything out there that's appropriate <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. speaking of inappropriate um, yes what was your favorite uh, Caps Cup Day with the Cup celebration? Oh, there were so many, but I'm gonna have to go with okay. The two that that stick out in my in my mind as the ones that just made me smile was um, in Toronto with Tommy because of that super special moment he had with his grandfather. And he was wearing Tommy's jersey. Oh, it was just, it was the sweetest. And I loved, and I said this before, no one could help me out, but his friends designed that really cool 43 shirt, whatever. Well, I can't remember it now. And I was like, God, I need one of those. And I never heard from anybody. But anyways, I loved that shirt. And then my, my other one, I just love to see Jay Beagle. I have, oh, okay. Actually, I have, I have three. Um, Jay Beagle, because he was, you know, in front of his truck, he's humble, nice guy, just everything about him. I love to see him being sent to another team uh, with yeah. those memories. That was okay. And then I will say my last one is definitely Holtby because his pictures, aside from being goddamn sexy, with his guitar and all that stuff. Jesus. Um, he just that hometown um, vibe, you know, he kept it very much like you would think of his personality. It doesn't seem like he's this big partier and whatnot. Maybe he is. I, I don't know. But I just thoroughly enjoyed how much the players brought it back to their homes and to the families and to the fans and to the community I just think that to me that was was great to see, and I mean there were there were some that were a little over the top. I think we you know Orloff and the fireworks, but I'm like, well, shit, if I won the Stan the Stanley Cup, I might I don't know want a marching band or something. I I don't know what I'd want, <laughs> but I'd want something really you know like would I want something like that or a little bit you know something more mellow. But I think those are the three that that stood out as you know genuine. Stanley Cup family moments. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that that works for me. But uh, you mentioned Tom Wilson and what what he did. D did you see what they put in the cup and what they ate out of the cup? What Tom Wilson ate out of the cup? Well, him and the kids that he had with him. Oh yeah, yeah, Lucky Charms. Yeah, Lucky Charms cereal. Yes. So yeah, that and that stuff's been around forever. So are you a fan? I mean, I was when I kid. I don't eat. I, I when I was a kid, I don't eat as much cereal now. Yeah. But uh, you know, you remember those commercials on TV? Yeah. I'm unfortunately. Sure, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure you saw them as a kid. Mm -hmm. And and when you see them but, as a kid, you don't you don't think a whole lot of them at the time because oh well, hey, he's yeah he's creepy. Yeah, it's a fa it's 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 your favorite cereal. But when when you're a, an adult and you get uh, some actual free time and you uh, overthink things like I do because I'm a bit OCD. Um, the, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think about it. The, the, you got these kids, they're running around chasing after a leprechaun who mm -hmm. is, doesn't have a pot of gold, he has a box of cereal. Okay, and, and you got to think of the, the mindset of, the, of that character, that guy. He's he's got to be thinking something like, fifth and begot of these kids that running around they after me cereal, and they call me Lucky. Stop. My name is not Lucky. It's Seamus. Why can't they even call me by my right name? It's Seamus. It's not Lucky. And nobody in all of Ireland the name of Lucky. Are you done? I don't know. Am I? Yes. 
please. Okay. 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 You know what? Uh-huh. Now would be the time um, for some f bombs. Fuck yes! Please fucking stop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's it's too okay. You got your. We hadn't. You know what? I will. I will admit. The second half of our podcast season, we didn't have a whole lot of impressions. Well, because I said no so many times, but that's okay. So now you started off, and and we did one for today. Do you have any more? No, no. And you sure? Uh, yeah. So like, okay. uh, and and I'm saying no, and I mean it. Are you? Yes. Okay. Because it's like, no, 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 stop. Or like, eh, no, haha, it's funny. You're little, saying no. A little of both. A little of both. Okay. Well, I'm then I look saying, forward. I'm saying no, but I'm leaning towards yes. Yes, I understand. And now I think all of the podcast world, or at least the Power Play Point podcast people, are all going to wonder, who is Gil going to imitate on the team now that Chase on Yes, is not with us. Yes, uh, uh, the, the, our our favorite Frenchman uh, has uh, long since departed. Um, yes. Yeah, it, it's that's going to be. Uh, I, I it's uh, nice that you brought that up. Uh, I I've got to think of uh, somebody uh, to uh, replace him with. I, I don't know. You, I, well, I that's just it. That. You really don't. You might have just been so stellar with Chase on that he can't be replaced. <laughs> Oh, you just wish. a thought. You wish. I know. I did. I had like a single tear where I'm like, oh, Chase on. Oh, but Gil and his impression. Well, there would be no need. <laughs> <clears> Who <throat> boy? <clears throat> Sorry. There would be no need for the an annoyance meter if we didn't have something like that in the works. So uh, that's true. They'll that's will, true. There, there's going to be something. I'll, I'll work something out. I'm sure. Can't wait. I'm sure you can't. <laughs> Cause I don't do anything to annoy you. So I'm like, so I put it out there that things, this goes for anybody. I told you my husband does impressions and I'm, and he intentionally does it cause he knows how annoying it is. And so he does it. So impressions and, and whistling, there's just certain things that just get under my skin. So not that that's, you know, fuel the fire or anything and just let you know. I should hope not. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, speaking of uh, fire, uh, more specifically uh, dumpster fire, mm-hmm. <sighs> how about this preseason? Blows. Like a whale but in I the sea. But I will say, I will say, I never put a lot into preseason because... And I spoke with my friend about this a couple of days ago as we were, you know, going back and forth on Sunday football and whatnot. Preseason, any sport, is boring as fuck. I can't because you're going to have one of two things happen. Everyone is going to put all of their uh, eggs in one basket or however you want to say it and, and focus solely on this one player who in the first game, in whatever whatever sport it is, you know, torn ACL, broken whatever, you know, jammed thumb, whatever it is, and like then suddenly they're out for the season and it's like, oh crap, what do we do? Then you, if that doesn't happen, then you have all these fans that think they know so much who – think I can't possibly support my team and be a fan if they play crappy in preseason because this is just exactly what's to come. And that's the kind of crap I like. I hate it on social media. I don't get into the preseason stuff. So for me, watching, uh, I watched one preseason game. I watched Hobbs score. Um, That was probably the only person that I will say stood out. I haven't been impressed with, with anybody else. Um, and I will say, I thought that they, I'm hoping that what we were seeing from that players on the ice was just cautious playing to avoid injury versus, um, them just looking damn sluggish because it was a summer of partying 
Devonte Smith Pelly, and uh, we'll, we'll not so much that. working we'll working out. Now. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, no. Well, what I saw was maybe some of that plus. Uh, oh, uh, hey, uh, I'm out here and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, more more or less. So you mentioned Hobbs until up until he scored that goal. I wasn't really impressed with him. Um, but uh, a guy I was impressed with, from what I saw anyway, uh, was Riley Barber. Uh, he, he, the two games I saw him in, uh, he showed me some desire. He was he was skating hard. He was going to the net. Um, he, I think he had, uh, pretty sure he had at least one goal, one assist, and uh, yeah, he he looked uh, he looked pretty sharp to me. Uh, he looked like okay. he was out there feeling which is, really wanted. Which... Right, but how, but this is what second or third season that we've been in the same preseason with his name on the roster. True. If you're not going to step up now, be done. Because there's no reason. There's no reason you maybe your first season, you know, maybe or a couple years ago, you were too young. You were, you know, shot. Who who knows what it was? You just were not ready for the NHL. But now you've been through all of this two or three times now. You better, you know, man the fuck up. Like, there's no reason not to. So I feel like, I feel like Hobbs and, and, and Riley, like, those are going to be two to watch. We've talked about Liam before, O'Brien, you know. Yeah. I hope he does something more permanent. Um, but what happens is, you know, we, we keep hearing the same names, and I'm like, ah, come on, like, but but I will say there was not one standout rookie newbie whatever you want to call it this year that or with not just this year within the last preseason games that have that has stood out like that just kind of blew everybody away. No, and that's that's absolutely true. And uh, Coach Reardon has said as much uh, in that yeah. his he's disappointed in that none of. Uh, None of the rookies, none of the newer guys are 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 are, are stepping up at all, uh, or at least making themselves a standout at all. Uh, at, Which at, is like absolutely point. insane because if you are okay, so however young you like, you know, some of these kids are seventeen, eighteen, you know, whatever. You know, they've been doing this for as long as as long as possible, fifteen years, maybe they've been skating. And you now are having an opportunity to be on the ice with the Stanley Cup champions. Wouldn't you go balls out and give it 110% right. to say, I've got what it takes to be on this team and yeah. I've got what it takes to, you know, hopefully win again and in the future and, and earn my position? I don't see why you wouldn't give it your all. Yeah, absolutely. I I totally yeah. agree, and it's it's just well more than a little disappointing, very frustrating that uh, these these guys are playing like walking skating grease fire right now, and yeah, uh, just I, I I don't know, and and I I don't want to. I mentioned Connor Hobbs before. Uh, I don't want to point the finger at uh, too many other guys, but. I mean, one in particular, Madison Bowie. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still all kinds of disappointed in him. Uh, he looked yeah. like he was skating in mud. I had so, so much hope for him last year, and he, he just turned out to be just ab, absolutely disastrous. And I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Give what him, are you doing? Maybe. Get, uh, oh. Uh, the missus is unpacking dinner. Oh, okay. Sorry. I couldn't. I couldn't. No, no, no. It's fine. I couldn't tell what, what you were she doing. She says you're fine. <laughs> so we'll just have to mark tape here, and no, it's it'll fine. be one, my one edit moment. Uh, but That's yeah, no. I, 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 just. I wish. I wish he could have done better, but he's still not showing me anything at all like uh, the the promise that we had for him last year. So maybe two-way du- uh, duty, maybe we keep him as a 7th D, I don't know. But he's he's got to start showing me something, or else yeah. he's going to start being trade bait. True. But again, preseason, I don't feel like they're... I don't think anyone 
that we're familiar with is giving 100% because I don't think anybody wants to risk injury. You know Wilson's a huge target. I mean, come on. Like, everyone is all over his ass. Um, I just, I don't know. I just feel like preseason, I'm done. I wish they'd start the season earlier. Um, You know, like... Normally, yeah. Normally, I would not have paid as much attention to preseason either. But I figured... This year, I figured, okay, well, you know, they're they're the defending champs, and uh, the 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 uh, the younger guys coming up will not only get a good experience, but a lot of these guys we're actually going to see on the team in the coming years because you've got, uh, pardon me, you've got uh, you know contracts expiring. Uh, Got a few players will be retiring soon. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, guys that will have outlived their usefulness, uh, and and that kind of a thing. So probably a good idea, I thought anyway, to get to know a lot of these newer faces now. Uh, now that they're they're in the the, the pipeline, uh, the goalie situation in particular will be uh, a point of interest this year, for example. But yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I can't, I don't know how much more I can do uh, because it was, yeah, it, it was just, it was just absolutely painful. But if there is a, if there is a silver lining to all this, as, as I like to find, uh, it's the fact that, and, and my friend Doug pointed this out in the True Caps fans room, uh, them, give them a quick shout uh, he said something, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but he said something along the lines of uh, uh, that he he uh, has been observing the way this team is playing uh, and better that they play like this right now instead of heading to the regular season with a bunch of false confidence. And then... Absolutely. And then dying a quick death there. Right, right. No, I, I agree. I mean, I don't... Just because they're not giving 100%, say, in the preseason game, like I said before, I feel like it's, you know, being cautious because of injury or to avoid injury. I also feel like it is also giving the Backstroms and the Koozies and the Ovechkins and whatnot an opportunity to see, okay, I'm out here and who is making themselves available, who is really... You know, who is someone that they're going to trust, right. you know, for, for, you know, passing for you know, whatever it is, whatever the circumstances. And I feel like it's just their opportunity to kind of, you know, they're, you know, these amazing players and they are veterans and they know everything about this game. And so you better believe when you're putting someone new out there, you're going to mash with somebody and say, OK, you know what? This works so wow, like here's a great duo or here's a great, you know, or then you, or you've got the three line, three on the line. And it's like, (coughs) okay, do these three go? What happens if we put so-and-so, you know, it's like all that kind of stuff. So I feel like they're kind of holding back a little bit just to kind of see who they're going to mesh with. So. Okay. Yeah. Makes, makes sense to me. Uh, And yeah, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, they find that needle in a haystack that turns into uh, the combination of the future. But right now, yeah, not not seeing it. Not seeing no. a whole lot of it. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of going to be, I'm kind of going to take the, uh, oh, what, how, what, what, what is that? You, 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 you watch your kid try something for the first time, but you kind of, you don't be a, a helicopter parent, but you're watch from 10 feet away or something like that. I think I'm going to take that approach from here on out. Yeah. Because if I had to sit through something but, like I mean, the Montreal game again. But you also, it's, you I know, think I'm going to be right there it, with you with the food poisoning. Ugh, gross. If, if hockey season was like, say, football season, when there's only, you know, 16 games or, you know, that to, and they, they basically kind of know pretty much who's making the playoffs who's wild card who's that about halfway you know between then it's like oh my god but you forget how many games (laughs) 
you know, or you don't forget, but it's like you have to take into consideration how many games are in hockey season, you know? So it's like if we're going to, like everything else, we're going to have the, you know, get Reardon's going to have some great moments and then we're going to have some questionable what the fuck moments like we did with trots and same thing with, you know, the goalies for someone to have to go between the pipes and, and be compared to someone like Braden Holpe, ah, like, that, you know, you, you have to have your confidence. Yes. But you have to also have your skill right there. You know, there's no second guessing and that's, you know, that's may take a couple of games. Obviously we've seen that in the preseason. We're losing five, one, and things like that. It's like, you know, so it, it's going to be very important, but I think that people just need to not hit the panic button, not get, you know, so DC sports cursed bullshit and, and just see what happens. See it all fall into place. Like it's supposed to, you know, just, just give it a chance. Like it's September. Like we, you know, like they won the Stanley cup in, june it's a long season give it some time have some faith and you know don't be yeah just just don't be negative going into it There's no reason for it but you're gonna go go have your dinner and you and i will talk next week about the big boston bruins game uh, that we will, and uh, just just one final quick point. Uh, you mentioned yes. you mentioned uh, the the coach. I'm still a little skeptical about him, but um, this this may actually turn out to be a good thing in that uh, he was uh, he's he's facing a bit of adversity for the first time. So uh, something, as I always say, something. Uh, good that comes out of that is that you learn from it and you become better for it. And, right. and so, uh, they're, they're trying to figure out, uh, okay, uh, what, what's going to work? Who's going to be, uh, who's going to be our top starters? Who's going to fit where? Uh, and that's, that's, that's his first task. And then steering him through what I always say is the toughest part, the first 10 games. Um, but fortunately they're going to have some road trips, um, to bond and things like that. So I, this, I think early on, thank goodness, we're going to see how he handles things. And uh, hopefully uh, Coach Reardon comes out uh, looking good on this because if he can steer them through that first part of the uncertainty, the, the, long, the rest of the long season will go fairly well, I think. Uh, I agree. Well, I, but I like Reardon. So I, I thought it was a good move in the beginning and I understand the hesitation but I feel good about it so I'm going to go with you know I'm just going to I'm going to support him I think he knows what he's doing he knows these play he knows the vets that's the most important thing is he knows those guys and who is going to to be able to play side by side with them and you know if he's if he's able to come forward and, and publicly say that no one has stood out that says a lot that's true that says a lot that's... because that is that is humbling to those players who are like, Oh shit. <laughs> you know, like maybe, maybe he's looking elsewhere, you know, maybe he's like, Hey, listen, you didn't do this. So to me, that's, you know, that's tough and that's coaching. And so that I respect. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. So I think, I think it's, I think it's a good move. I support him. I know you're kind of on the, on the cusp a little bit, but that's okay. Well, that that's true, and uh, part of our show. <laughs> yeah, that that is. And uh, one one last point. It's uh, this has been talked about, and we mentioned him him earlier, but uh, this has been talked about a bit, uh, uh, especially in uh, uh, RMNB. That's Russian Machine Never Breaks. Uh, for those of you new to the Caps, um, but uh, yeah, one player in particular we have not seen this preseason. Uh, being Devonte Smith Pelly, uh, because by his own admission he is not in game shape, not in condition. Uh, you know, good on him to admit it again, but I mean, I'm sorry, you're 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 on a prove it contract, basically one year, one million dollars, and you come in like that. I, I get that. What in his words, he had a short summer, short turnaround, but. That, that's just not good. That's not that's not setting a good example, 
obviously. I agree. I agree. It was it was absolutely disappointing. So and and you know, consequences. You know, who knows what it's going to take for him to realize. You know, because he did come for it. He didn't make excuses. You know, he he basically, you know, hey, listen, you won the Stanley Cup and you go home and you're treated like a king and like a celebrity and it's all totally amazing. Um, but you can't go from, you know, all these games working out, you know, once or twice a day, traveling games, whatever, to suddenly stopping and, you know, partying a little bit more and not working out and, you know, sleeping in and eating others, you know, whatever it is. He's not going to fall completely out of shape. It's not going to take long to get him back into shape. But are we ready to put him out there against Boston? No. Well, yeah. And that's speaking of that, uh, you want to really send a message to both him and the rest of the team. Healthy scratch for that game. That's what you do. Yeah, I agree. And, and it just might have to be what it comes to. Tell you to work out. No. Or to watch you know your calories or to watch your drinking or whatever it is you're an adult so come on like don't don't get cocky and I don't think he is like I don't I don't find him like an arrogant player I never have I actually admire that he took this one year and whatever else I I just don't want him to be like ah you know whatever no show us the Smith Pelly that we saw on the ice this year and in that, that game against, you know, there are the games against the Knights and the amazing things that you can do. Yeah. But don't take, but don't, don't take advantage of just because you have, you know, Stanley Cup team and, and the champions. Right. And don't, then don't you sit don't, back, <laughs> don't, don't rest on that. I mean. Be... Right. Because, I mean, you and I spoke before that it's like, holy shit, Ovechkin and his Miami workouts. Yeah. And wherever he was, the guy was a beast. And you've got Wilson and his boxing and every, I mean, uh, Barakowski. Like, I mean, everybody was doing, even God, Vrana, they were all doing things to say like, hey, listen, we may be home, Sweden, Czech Republic, Toronto, wherever it is, but we are finding ways to keep going. You know, it doesn't have to be on the ice. And so, you know, Smith Pelly, a little disappointed, still going to pull for you. But little, yeah, little humble pie. I agree with you, Gil. And the happy or the um, the scratch for Wednesday. True, very true. And that's yeah. And that, like I said, I would not be surprised if that were to happen. And I would support the coach if he decided to do that. I don't. It, it may not happen more than likely, but I, I would very much support that. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, this is a good place to uh, wrap it up for our uh, <laughs> for what amounts to our preseason, uh, because right. uh, next week will be uh, season's eve, uh, as the home opener, of course, as we mentioned, is against the Bruins, the banner raising, etc., etc., on uh, the 3rd, which is that Wednesday. So, uh <clears throat> Amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. And it, that'll be that'll be great to watch, and so uh, we'll we'll be so coming much. to you with with more of a, uh, I more of an in depth preview uh, of of the team from top to bottom and all the main positions and all that. So uh, got <laughs> more more details for you hardcore fans of the Caps out there. Uh, more, better and more in depth analysis, I think. Uh, so, uh, unless, uh, Anna, did you have any other, uh, anything else you want to put out there? Any final thoughts? Nope. All good. Okay. Sounds great. So, all right. So for Anna Knox, this is the Blue Liner on Point signing off and reminding you that opinions, no. yes, uh, opinions are a lot like orifices. Everybody has about five or six of them. And nothing good ever comes out of them. God. Gross. <laughs> Hallelujah and let's go Caps. Go Caps. This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcasts, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, 
now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Conkle.